Hi guys, Kabi from UiPath Hacks here. This video is another UiPath Apps video and this time we will look at the design of an app. If you are completely new to UiPath Apps, please watch my other videos on understanding the interface and on building a first simple app. There is nothing complicated about the concepts used in this video either, but we will not focus anymore on the basics and we will just explain some concepts that are new and just a bit more advanced. Now, this is no UX award-winning interface, but I think you can agree that it looks better than my average UiPath apps interface. <laughs> also, when I refer to the design and look and feel, I'm also considering very basic user experience elements like, hmm, nothing happened for a few seconds. I wonder if the app froze or is it just working in the background? Or, oh no, I just went back to this page and all my manual entries are gone now. Do I really have to enter them again? We will look at these considerations and see how they were implemented. So let's start by looking at the app. We have the title, invoice dashboard. This app is just counting the number of invoices in either completed, new, in progress or in error from a number of folders. So the app is quite simple but we want to focus on the design and that is referring both to how the elements are displayed on the page as well as the feel of the app or how we designed the interaction with the user and the experience of navigating between pages, for example. So we have two pages, the main page and the settings page. And the main page is uh, displayed by default when the app launches. We have a title up here that is um, just a label basically. And we have a number of buttons and other labels on screen. For the header, we have three buttons, three icons actually. The home and the refresh one are not yet implemented, but I've played a bit with the settings one. And one thing to notice already is that we have a number of containers in a hierarchical order here. So if we start from the page, we have our container layout and then we have one big container and inside that we have three containers. One is for the header, you can see it with the red line around it. One is just for spacing and the third one is for the items. If we drill down to the header one, we have two containers inside it and they are ordered horizontally. So already one difference you can see between the first containers and these ones is that layout here is horizontal for some and vertical for others. And you can see for example in the container for the icons here for the menu that the layout is horizontal. It means that the icons will be displayed one after the other as opposed to one under the, the other. Uh, so this is quite important when it comes to uh, designing the layout of the page. This is one difference um, and of course using the containers in such a way that uh, we get the design we want. Um, if we move down to the items layout, we have here actually four containers just to be able to uh, display in a nicer way and control the way that these icons and labels are displayed. And inside each container we have one icon and one label. And for the label here, we would want to actually display some information. So this would be the label for the done invoices or completed invoices icon. Then we'll have the new ones, how many are new in the folders, how many have an error and how many are just in progress. So this is the main page. And then we move to the settings page. And here we have one container layout with one big container and inside it we have five containers and the label for the title, settings page. What we can notice here is uh, for the style we have used customized one, 
we have a special font, Comic Sans, um, a size of course, we bolded it, and um, I think I didn't play too much with the margins or the size, but we could do that um, with the font size as well. So changing the font is a nice touch. And then in the next containers, we have four paths. So basically we want to allow the user to enter here the paths and customize the app so that um, it could point to different folders where those invoices are stored. And at the end, either cancel, which is going back to the main page without making any changes or saving these settings and making the app look in the new folders to count the invoices. And we have four containers for the four folders, new, done, in progress, and error. And the fifth one is for the two buttons, save and cancel. And again, we see uh, that we are mainly using horizontal layout for all these small containers and a vertical one for the main one, where we just list the containers one after the other one. One other thing worth mentioning is looking at the text box. Now, when we just drag and drop a new control, a text box control, this looks quite horrible. It's important to adjust it to the font and size of the text in your page. So what I did here is I went uh, here to the size and updated the width and the height of the text box just to make it a bit uh, fit in to the page more. This makes quite a big difference in terms of look for the app. And then in terms of buttons, we have two buttons. Let's look at the cancel one. We have an event here. Let's see it. It is just opening a page. So basically moving back to the main page. We are now in the settings page. And if we look to the save button, this is a bit more complex. This opens a page, so it goes back to the main page. And in addition, runs a process, this apps designer UX which basically is um, reading the input of the user for the folder paths, saving this, and then um, running the app uh, for, for these new folders. And it is going to display the results on the first page. So how that was done, we have first an input override, where we are running uh, this process, apps designer UX process, and overriding these input output parameters, the paths, with whatever the user has entered in these fields on the UI, new folder path input, done folder path input, and so on. Then when started, we are using this spinner. We are activating the spinner basically. So when the bot starts working, as soon as the user has clicked the save button, we are showing this spinner and showing this information that the bot is running in background because this only takes a few seconds now, but on a different process might take a bit longer and the user is wondering what happened. Do I have to click again? Is the app unresponsive or is it all fine, but I have to wait a few seconds or even minutes maybe. So it's good design to give the user a feedback of what's happening and allow him to wait. And when completed, uh, we are going to display the results. So the number of documents on each of the four categories on the main page. So in this in-progress counter on the main page, we are going to display um, the numbers calculated by the bot. So we do that for the four elements. And then at the end, we are making or we are hiding the spinner. So we just put the same show hide spinner and unchecking this box. This makes the spinner go away. And then the user knows that the app is again ready for input. So this is basically what we are doing on the save page, on the save button. And one thing to mention before we start the app is we have some events as well. We can see them here on the page load itself. So not on the, on the buttons when the user clicks something, but when the page changes. That's important because otherwise your path apps will forget what the user has entered in terms of inputs and lose that information and display uh, whatever blank or unavailable again to the user. And that can be quite frustrating for the user to have to enter again the same information when he or she are going back to the same page. And to solve that issue, I have an event here on the page itself. So not on the button, but on the page. And I'm running a process actually, a different process from the one I run when I save. 
And this process here on the main page, there is a, almost a similar one, identical one on the settings page, just with a bit different fields behind it, where when I'm loading a page, there is a bot running and it's checking the data entered by the user on that page. I'm storing the data before I leave the page. And now this bot is checking that records and displaying them back on the page when the user revisits the page. So in terms of um, how I did that, we will look at the process in uh, Studio in a second. But again, where I started, I displayed the spinner. And when I complete it, I am updating those fields, input fields or labels on screen, updating them with uh, whatever the bot has pulled from storage for those values. So the bot is just checking the stored values and displaying them on screen again as soon as the page is loading. So I'm showing those, I'm hiding the spinner again, and that's it. And let's have a look now at how that was implemented. We have here one example of the bot for storing data and retrieving data from the main page. I'm working with data service in UiPath. Now, I will not focus on the data service in this video. I plan to make a future video that will focus only on data service, but that's ideal, I think, to manage these issues. Um, with UiPath apps when we want to save some data um, that the user has entered and display it back. So this is the tab for data service. Um, I've created an entity called designer UX. There are some uh, built-in fields when we are creating any entity, uh, like the ID and who created them and when and so on. But then I've added here some fields, some numbers. So number of invoices which are done, number of invoices in error, in progress and new. Those are numbers, and then also I'm saving the paths entered by the user for the finalized so an error, progress, and new invoices so that the user won't have to enter them again. So I'm saving that data here in this structure. So there's a designer UX object basically with these fields. It's like a class in a sense. And then I'm using this in my studio bots. So if we look at one of them, which is uh, storing and retrieving the data for the main page, I am basically querying the um, records inside this designer UX entity type in data service. In this case, I will always have only one record um, inside this entity, one line, because I want to save on that one line these numbers here. So if we look at the data, we have the fields, we have the structure of the entity, and we have what data is inside. We could have any number of, of rows here, like a table, for example. But in my case, I want to have only one row and keep updating it. So if the user has entered some paths here, I will not create a second row, that makes no sense. I will just update the values on this row so that the bot can then retrieve them and display them on page. And then I'm sh I should show here once calculated uh, what are the number of documents and remember them as well. So I have one row, I have the ID here, which was computer generated. So in Studio, I'm just um, querying for this ID, this single ID and getting the result in the list of objects, of entities of um, designer UX type. Then I'm getting the first one, and then I'm just basically filling in the out arguments of this workflow with whatever was inside the object. And to do that, I have some out arguments of type integer, and basically here I'm getting the docs new property of this object. This is the docs new, it's exactly the one which I have defined here, the name. I have a display name and I have a name which is used by, by Studio. So I'm accessing this property or, or value inside object and I'm uh, converting it to integer and assigning it to my out parameter because I want these out parameters to be uh, displayed on, on those labels or input fields in the app. So I'm just basically getting from data service my line with the data. I am then assigning whatever values were there to out arguments. And then these arguments will be displayed with the app as we saw also in the last videos. So nothing very special there. Let's look also at the bot which is um, running when we press the save button. There we are counting the files. So uh, we are getting as input parameters, the paths for the four categories, and we have out parameters for um, the number of documents in each category. 
And as variables, we have just this uh, array of files that we get when we get all the files in one directory. So we say directory get files on the first path for new documents. Then I am counting them. I'm counting the files in that folder and assigning them to this out integer number of new documents, displaying it, doing the same for the other categories. And at the end, I'm creating a new designer UX object. And afterwards, again, I'm querying my data service entity here, designer UX, getting the first row, uh, having the results as a list of objects, getting the first one as I only have one object. And then I have a multiple assign here where I am basically assigning back to the object or overwriting the object properties or fields, how many documents are new, how many are done in progress or in error. And I have here just the um, output argument or the input output arguments for the paths and same thing for the paths. So I'm overwriting the number of documents as well as the paths in the object and at the end I'm updating that object in data service with itself basically because I'm pulling it first I'm querying it I'm getting it here I'm updating all the fields that are relevant and then I'm uploading it back or updating it back and that's it so this was one of the bigger questions I had with the app how do I manage to make the data persistent and not ask the user to enter it every time he or she wants to Come back to an old page. So let's display the app now. You can preview it. So we have already the spinner here showing the updating of values. So the first bot has run when we loaded this page and it's just displaying zeros because that's what we have here for the data. Zeros for now. So let's go in the settings page and now we're running the bot again, updating values and it's pulling here the paths that it has for now. It's not available because the user hasn't entered anything yet. And now let's um, look at the folder where we have the paths and just copy paste some paths here. All right, and now we will save. And now the spinner is working again. We have switched to the first page again, to the main page and we should display the number of documents in those folders. All right, it took a while actually. Um, I think the spinner has stopped before we load it or before the bot has finished running. But anyways, we have the values here now. We can check the data service. Let's refresh here. And we have the new number of documents as well as the paths here saved. And now if I go back to the settings page, I should get here, again, the bot is running, retrieving the values, and it's displaying here the values for me. So I don't have to enter them again anymore. I have them here. If I click on cancel, it just goes back to the first page without doing anything. But again, it's running the bot for refreshing or displaying the values on these counters. Um, I've had issues when I developed this uh, with one of the labels, for example, not being displayed as expected. Um, I don't know why the new counter label was not updating at all. What I did in the end, I just exited the app and went in back again. And when I looked at the details behind it, my settings on this label were not saved. No idea why. Um, so if something really strange happens like this, maybe just go out of the app, enter again, and then check again everything if everything is in place. Sometimes it displays something as being saved, but it's not. Anyways, apps is just released since a few months, so it's being developed. Uh, it's normal to have some bugs, but I think it it already looks and works quite nicely. So that was it for today's video. We went through three basic design concepts. One is styling the look of the app by using multiple stacked containers and tweaking their parameters. Second one is making use of the spinner to let the users know that the app is working in the background and did not freeze. And third one is making use of the UiPath data service to save the values entered by the user in order to improve his or her experience and not make them re-enter the same information each time they switch between pages. More about the UiPath data service in a future video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and if you want to support the channel and be informed of future videos, please subscribe and click the notification bell. Thank you for watching and have a great day.